<laughs> All right. Oh, dude, that's, oh, not, that's smart. not good. Yeah, that's, that's not, not smart. That's not good. Why would idea. you do that? I don't know. I just put my phone in the snow. You just put your phone in the snow. It is snowing really hard, you guys. That's we are pushing good. through these questions. Oh, sorry. I just put it on your pants. <laughs> that's awkward. I just touched your knee. That's okay. It's a good thing we know each other. Yeah, we're fast friends. <laughs> Thank you, Lego Man 4223. You see that? Page one. What's your favorite? Like, oh my goodness. Yeah, Lego Man yeah. 4223. Let's see. We've got original, we've got lightning, we've got, oh man, is that Kendo? There's, oh, you know what? I gotta say, there's a really cool one right here, and I really dig the shoulder pads. Shoulder, shoulder pads pad down there is, I think, it, it's just, it's such a, okay. it's an edgy look. That was from the first page, and I gotta say, right away, Every guy loves to see his arms in a sleeveless shirt. With the the top the top one. The, the top one right there. I think right. that's just one of one of the best outfits if, we got it, to wear. If I was to say <laughs> topless arm man or Ooh. shoulder pad ninja, well, what do you go? Well really at the end of the day, if you have to be prepared as a ninja, I have to go shoulder pad armor because of course you're just gonna you're gonna absorb a lot more hits. You're not gonna bruise as easily. Right. You know, you gotta keep the arms looking nice. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Do you own any uh, Lego sets? I actually have a lot of uh, Lego sets. Most of them get played with, so I, at least we know they're not just sitting on the shelf, which is always kind of sad for toys. I do have a couple collectibles that uh, are strictly kind of uh, shelf sitters, I guess are you could call Ninjago? them right now. No. They are Ninjago. Right. I did manage to finally score a J clock after trying to find one for a couple years. They're sold out. I couldn't find one. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I have, uh, I guess, I mean, I don't want to say illegal, but I have a piece that was sort of obtained for me from a store that was maybe fully assembled with like a whole display thing. Anyway, it's in a case. It may one day be sold for charity. We'll see. How uh, the statute limitations on some? Uh, Maybe we can talk about. <laughs> Maybe we can talk about that off uh, camera. You know, <laughs> your dealer is hashtag <laughs> sources for Lego stuff. <laughs> if you didn't get Jay, which okay, hold on. Oh, was that a strange sound? That was a bird. Jay, I actually thought it was my what camera happened? resetting. Yeah, but, <laughs> hey man, don't, hey, steal, my don't steal my voice. That's me. That's me. What the heck, man? <laughs> if, 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 if I didn't get Jay, obviously, I'd be oh, voicing Zane. Oh, no, no, it was Zane. Yeah, yeah oh, that my. is the question. Hey, man. What? Seriously. Hey, man. Seriously. Uh, stop, man. That's, that's my stuff. That's my stuff. Awesome. Which ninja would you have liked to have voiced? You know what? I really do think that, you know, you know, not second best or by any means. I just think equally important in a group, especially as diverse and as cool as the ninja, is the voice of reason and the voice of logic and that voice of zen, dare I call it, zen calm. And that's really what Zane is. He's, I mean... I thought you were going to say Sensei Wu. No! he kind of is that. He, you know what, and, and he is, but I mean, as, as a leader, it, it's so much more about age and experience and wisdom, and he knew so many things that we never knew for years about the worlds and the dangers and the weapons and the origins of so many things, but that's the weight of responsibility and wisdom, right? But I think Zane has that fresh, young sense of let's slow everything down and try and look at this logically and he really is a character that I look up to personally because your ability to keep your head in a bad situation that's important too so props to Zane so you pick him absolutely hey let's forget about the ninja okay and let's open this up now because this is another question coming up all, all the characters in Ninjago wow all the characters like in Ninjago who would I like to be yeah most I think Ronan's got it pretty cool I have yeah. to say he's that sort of Fly by night, kind of dare I call uh, an illusion Han Solo ish type character. Yeah. He kind of, you know, writes his own story and he does his own thing. I also have to say I'm biased because that's my son's name. So, uh, have you ever invented anything in life like Jay? Have I invented anything? Oh man. Well, living in the country, I definitely make things uh, a lot. Um, I have in the past made small contraptions that were like, you know, little little lock boxes that are fun for kids to take apart as puzzles and things. Um, I, I, made a, I made a small trebuchet, which is like a like I a don't catapult. even know what a trebuchet is. It's a catapult. I never noticed this, but it ha a couple of people have commented this. Okay. Hey, Michael, we've been referring to Jay's voice uh, changes as reverse puberty 
since his, your voice, was low during the first few seasons and then got higher and higher as time went on. Was there any reason for that? You know what? Did that happen? It's not something I'm I'm aware of. I know for myself, I've sort of been playing the difference between a young teen who sort of tries to make that about, you know, that sort of macho and we're ninja. And that was something I remember as a bit of a through line in the early seasons was that this was supposed to come back on them. Like this macho sort of, you know, you know, overtone of we can do anything was sort of, you know, one of those things that was going to be tested. And we knew that. I think over time, as Jay and the group gets progressively older, you get to a point You've seen so much go wrong, and there's still so much to freak out about, but now you're not really concerned about who cares about you because, you know, like, these are your family, these are your friends, and if anyone's going to freak out, it's going to be Jay. And if anyone is good to do it around, it would be your family. And maybe, I think just maybe, it's that it's that lack of, it's that lack of attitude, and his voice is just sort of, you've know, always been there. But you know when you cover your voice, you sort of drop it a little bit, right? I think it was just a lot of attitude. His attitude has changed. So now so he because just- because of his attitude, you've gone with yeah. your voice to where he, the I think the, the voice the is sort of- The gone. The sort of, the voice and the script have sort of naturally progressed to a point where now he doesn't care who thinks he's freaking out. He's freaking out. There's a lot right. going on, right. so, you know. Anytime that happens, your voice is just gonna go crazy. Now, I this, think. This is gonna come up. This is gonna come up. It's gonna come up. No, like later. Okay. But I'm, I'm gonna do it now. Okay. So then it won't come up later. Okay. All right, question for you is, Okay. when you are freaking out as Jay, are you making all that stuff up or is it in the scripts? You know what? I have to take uh, just a little bit of credit and a lot of direction. We have a wonderful director, as you know, Michael Donovan, who's a great guy who's been in the business a long time. He's very intuitive. He's really, really smart when it comes to breaking down a scene and giving direction. But when it comes to individual performance, all these little things are really just a combination of the the, the stakes and the scene and all those fun little things. It's really just, it's really just me being me really in a lot of right. ways like this is really freaking me out and like <laughs> all this stuff is just it's like i'm just i'm pretending and i'm going through all the motions you're you know, doing something we the in scene, the business called we call it a, acting, um, acting. Well, did you hear um how i became a robot writers told me like you know when we did the pilot yeah. episodes or the movie or the pilot, whatever you want to call it back then mm -hmm. um zane was not a robot and, i remember and, and something then, like this and then this. they heard my voice that's right. And, and then they were, and then they saw the the picture that he had a flat military top. Oh. And then when they said flat military top with his voice, it sounds robotic. So that's the direction they went. It's an interesting thing. So we can kind of influence. It is. It the is an, inter process. an interesting thing to to be part of a creative process because your choices as an actor, you know, reflect on their choices as writers and it all reflects back and I mean it just like I said it takes a team to make something as amazing as Ninjago and we're lucky to be part of that. I'm this is actually how they they wrote <laughs> they wrote it in the comments so okay. Kind of, how is your relation with Kelly? My relationship with Kelly No 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 no. Relation. That's Oh, what, <laughs> well, yes they said relation. I'm <laughs> Okay. So Maybe we'll end a, a ship. We'll put a ship at the end of that. You know <laughs> what? For for the sake of word specificity, we absolutely will put a ship at the end of that. My relationship with Kelly is great. Kelly Masker is a wonderful voice performer. She does an amazing job as Nia. She's uh, she's a good friend. When you and Kelly are doing romantic scenes, is it oh. awkward for you as an actor? Again, that's one of those things they call acting. You know what? It's it's not awkward because it's like pretend. And if you have someone in your life who you know maybe makes you feel that way or gives you those feelings you can kind of say oh well just for today just for a few moments you know across the room looking at my voiceover friend i'm going to pretend that she's someone that i love and that i feel for and then you know what that's really what acting right. does it brings a scene together i don't think any of us like there's a lot of people that ask about is it awkward in the room when you 
like you and Cole are fighting or this between you and Curry. No, there's no, none of that. No, stuff. there's really no awkward feelings between anyone in uh, our very real lives. I could walk into any one of these people on the street on any given day, and it's it's hugs all around. Everybody's great. We really do have a wonderful writing team, and they take us on a great journey. But I definitely don't have any bad feelings against anybody who's. I mean, many people have voiced characters that were good and evil. I mean, that would be really yeah. weird. Like I half like you. Because you played this character, but I don't <laughs> yeah. like you because you were that guy. You're it's half like, like. You're half like. Yeah, no, that would be strange. You'd be like thumbs not so. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Speed round number two. Speed round two. All right. Do you think Jay will get another season? I would love that. Yes. How do you prefer for the range of your voice? I really just do a lot of singing and talking to myself in the car on the way to my sessions. Do you prefer voicing characters in the highest range like Jay or the lower range? You know what? I have been very lucky to do both successfully. It's a lot more fun to be kind of high screamy though. Of all the bad guys you've seen in Ninjago, which one would you have liked to have voiced? Ooh, Moro would have been really fun. Gotta say, sorry, Andrew Francis, great guy. Moro would have been fun. Are you a Jay and Nia shipper or a Cole and Nia shipper? Ooh, oh, I gotta say, I think Jay's more right for her. I'm for just... me personally, do you know what shipping is? I don't know what shipping is. I was faking it, I have to say. <laughs> Pause I... this lightning round. Uh... Allow me. <clears throat> As we have known that I've gotten a little cooler with the terms from the young kids. He's so cool. <laughs> shipping. Right. Right. Is when you like dig it or you approve like, oh yeah. This interview with Michael and Brent, I ship it. Oh, yeah. Or cool. Them is as that a like couple, I ship it as a couple. Oh, like, like, like. I don't know the root of ship in this. Yeah, instance. it's absolutely ridiculous. To be honest I'm like, is it like worship? Thing. Is it like I worship that? Like no, I, like I, no. It's like you no? approve, you dig it. Oh, you know? it's cool. You know what? When I was young, we used to do this. Yeah. <laughs> It's called a thumbs up. You might want to look that up sometime. There's an emoji now. But the best part is, is you gave an answer to a I gave an answer! <laughs> I'm like, but I do ship them. I gotta say, he's better for her. So Alright. I ship that. Unpause. What was your reaction to you and Cole fighting in the scripts? I thought it was totally appropriate given their feelings about their, the girl involved. Can you make a YouTube channel? I totally could, but really there's this thing called free time that sometimes adults don't have. Yeah, it, it takes Love a lot you. of time. They don't know that. He works Basically. incredibly hard. You guys are lucky as a following to have someone as dedicated as Brett Miller. Small applause. Well, actually, Small, I just You better put that, this in the video. I, I'm going to see this <laughs> golf clap, aren't I? You're doing I, a lot of really I, awesome stuff. Props to I, you. Okay. All the fans, props to Brent. I just wanted them to be able to meet you guys. When I was a kid, man, like I, I would have loved to have been able to ask Oh, Some totally. The people I looked up to. Absolutely, yeah. So, anyways, I'm glad that you guys get to finally meet him. I was saving him. <laughs> Otherwise, you would have just like watched and then never watched again. Oh, we saw the ninja. Let's go. But who's the fast talking weird blue guy? <laughs> I saved him. Yeah. It was on purpose. <laughs> All <laughs> You're right. Great. Favorite part about playing Chet and Twilight? Oh man, I got this. Oh. You're on the back of a heart. I rode a really awesome motorcycle. Um, I have always loved motorcycles. I rode uh, a motorcycle in, in my private life for many, many years before becoming a dad. Uh, I've, I've done some really cool, fun, safe stuff on motorcycles. And um, because of that uh, lifestyle kind of in my real life, I've got to ride motorcycles in movies and television a whole bunch. And that was definitely one of the coolest bikes. Yeah, you're with Bella on some sort of like. We did this really second, cool scene. The second one or something. In New Moon, in there's New Moon. a moment where I believe she's trying to create a dangerous situation to bring about her love interest to save her. And uh, yeah, I was I was a bad boy on a motorcycle. We did a big yeah. Papa Wheelie and a nice power slide. And I yeah. I guess I looked a little rugged. Did There's you get? To, did, did you do the Papa Wheelie and the Power Slide yourself? I would love to take credit for that. That would be stuntman David Jaycox, and then there was an entire rigging team that built a huge robotic arm slide that was, of course, as you can imagine, painted green. Right. So, so you, you did do it, right? Yeah, yeah, I you did, totally it. did it. I totally yeah, did it. Totally, I did all that totally. stuff. Okay, we're going real fast because we're running real out of fast. Time. Lightning round three, go! In real life, what ninja would you be in a live action? Uh, I, I'm Jay, sorry, yes. What parts did you try out? No, never mind. Wait, did you try for all the parts in Ninjago? I did, I actually read for Kai, uh, and I read for Cole, and I read for Zane, and I read for Jay, who was originally, spoiler alert, slash, uh, I guess, fan 
fact, uh, he was originally named Ren, if you can believe that, guys. No, they can. They cool. probably already know that. They're, cool. They're pretty you guys are so smart. What was it like being on the set of Warcraft and playing the Dwarf King Magni? It was amazing, but hard on my back. What, oh, why? I had to sort of shuffle in this very tiny posture. I was super compressed. Terry Notary, who's an amazing movement director slash performer, he's been in and out of Cirque du Soleil for many years, uh, spent uh, time as a gymnast and has done so many films, teaching actors how to walk and to embody different characters. And Terry, who was looking at me at six foot two, was thinking about a character who was four foot ten and oh, was wow. really like, here's what we got to do. And I spent weeks working with him to create this really tiny, heavy, dragging sort of big metal ship kind of walk. It was a lot of fun. It was amazing. Some people said, just so you know, that they went and bought that movie specifically because they knew you were in it. Oh, you know what? Also, you. fun fact, I played two other characters that did not make it to the final cut of that film. So, oh. Have you ever been emotional in a session before, like when Neo was dying? Oh, so many times I've had real, real cries. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That, really? You, really? Really? No. No. There's a little bit of ice in his heart, everybody. There's no, I, I've never. Ice. Really? I've I've actually once or twice been like, wow, I was really touched by that. Yeah, of course. Oh no. Yeah. Not me, man. Oh, oh good for you. Good yeah. for you. He's, You're the one with the he, beard. He's cold. <laughs> what does a beard have to do with anything? Well, you're supposed to be really manly. Like you, you, you what? You're a really manly man. They don't know this, but you're like farm boy hey, man. There's, <laughs> the, there's, there's, Drop hey, the and... there's, there's some ideas and impressions about what a man is out there. I just say be who you are and don't worry about it. No, but you are manly. Come on. Okay, we're supposed to be rushing this. Okay. <laughs> you're bad at interviews. If, if you could ever go back and, hey man, hey man. <laughs>